wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I yield myself into your very capable hands. Therefore, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind, none of me and all of you. Father, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these your precious people. Every ear is anointed to hear the word of God. Every heart is good ground to receive the word of God. And the Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move upon every device, every row, every heart, every mind, every soul. Have your way. We receive and we thank God in advance for the wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and manifestation of his word. And Father, we are sitting up under the word of God right now. This is a holy interaction. You, you, your, word, your, your, your word is life. Your word is life in abundance to us. And we open up our hearts and our spirits to receive the spiritual seed, the word of God. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. We're going to hop right into this and uh, dig into the Word of God uh, this evening, this beautiful Wednesday evening here in Florida. Well, you know, the autumn and the fall, I just love it here because uh, it's just cool. It's not humid. It's not sticky. This is the greatest time of the year for me and my wife. We just kind of hang out and let the breeze just, just hit us in the face in the evening and at night. Amen. Listen, uh, for a title tonight, uh, I want to give you this. For a title... It's called The Great Work. The Great Work. The Great Work. And, and as you listen to the Word of God uh, tonight, as we open up the Word of God, I want you to know there's nothing greater than the work of God in your life. There's nothing higher than the work of God in your life. There's nothing uh, uh, more precious than the work of God in your life. And, uh, and, and I'm guilty of placing things before that. I'm guilty of chasing the will of God. I'm guilty of asking God what's next. I'm guilty of asking God, where do I go next? What do I do next? What am I going to be tomorrow? What am I going to be two months from now? I'm guilty of living my life out here with God. And God says, do you know the most precious thing I do in a believer's life? I do a good work in them. I do a good work in them. And he said, Derek, place a tremendous, a high value on the work I'm doing in you. What work? You're bringing forth that salvation. You're manifesting yourself in me. God wants to manifest himself in you in a powerful way. And the day you embrace the great work and place a tremendous value on the great work that God is doing in you, the work that God is doing in you is greater than any book you can ever write, greater than any business you can ever start, greater than any invention you can ever start, greater than anything you can ever do. The work of God in us is greater than all of that. So what I want to say tonight is going gonna, is gonna to debunk low self-esteem. It's going to debunk low confidence. It's going to debunk the idea that, God, am I doing what you call me to do? God, God, you know, God, I'm lost. Am I lost? Am I on the right track? If God is working in you, you are in the full will of God for your life. This eliminates all confusion. This eliminates all distraction. Why? Because if, God, if you know that God is working in you, let me tell you something. You're not worried about what's going on outside of you. Why? Because once God manifests himself into a believer, everything on the outside of him prospers. Supernatural wisdom, sharp wisdom, spiritual recall, high confidence, not walking that, walking around wondering and, 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 and allowing low self-esteem to drive your life, allowing low self-esteem to try to, to, try to, to try to pin you down, put your shoulders on the mat. Listen, you got to learn to wrestle with your shoulders on the mat, and you got to wrestle out of that thing knowing, I have confidence in the work of God, what God is doing in me. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And you need to know the great work is higher than anything. Start preaching that to your kids because a lot of times we place a lot of things before what I'm going to talk about tonight. And, and it's all external. But what they don't realize is, do you know the greatest work on earth is happening in you? <laughs> that God is working and moving and he lives and breathes in you? That's the greatest work. And the bigger you build that, this stuff out here is butter cake. <laughs> being, a, being a CEO is butter cake. Being an awesome wife, being an awesome husband, butter cake. Making straight A's, butter cake. A -a ascending and rising in your company, butter cake. Why? Because you are focused on the great work. Let everybody else chase God. Let everybody else chase the anointing. You want to know, 
and you want to you know, and you better believe that God is doing a good work in you. God is doing a great work in you, and there's nothing greater than that. Let's go to Philippians. Hallelujah. Woo! Philippians 1. <clears throat> Too many believers are walking around, you know, with a smile on their face and a wrench in their heart. A smile on their face, and they're, they're, they have low self-esteem. They're always confused. They're always to the next thing, trying to do the next thing, trying to do this, trying to build that, and don't realize you, the first thing you need to build is your relationship with God. And everything else is going to become clear. But you, sometimes we tell God, you're taking too long. You're too slow, God. So I'm going to go ahead and do this thing. I'm going to go ahead and step out here. And, 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 and people step out, and the thing goes nowhere. Why? Because for some reason, you deem what's on the outside uh, of you that you're doing, you've deemed it greater than the work that God is doing inside of you. And anytime you do that, you put the work of God at naught, and you work on this thing that you say God gave you. <laughs> Listen, bless yourself before you try to bless others. Bless yourself with the word of God before you try to bless others. Bless yourself. Let the good work of God, let the good work of God be known by men in you. Listen, there's nothing you can build outside of you. No one should look outside of you and see more God outside of you than they see in you. Oh, my ministry is 5,000 5, 5, 5, people. Okay, that's good, but it's not bigger than the God in you. Shouldn't be. Oh, my business is thriving. It's, it's, it's just off the chain. That's good, but it should not it should not tell people, oh, he has God because his business is growing, or she has God because this thing is going for her, or this church has God because they're so big. No, 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 no. They have God because they have God, and we can see it. We can see the good work. We can see the great work. We can see the manifestation of God's meekness, gentleness, and, 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 and his long-suffering, his patience, his love. We can see that in that person. We can see the countenance. We can see the, the, the way they conduct themselves. We can see the spiritual fruit in their lives. And the world has told us, no, chase the degree. No, let people know what you're doing. We got to stop all these press releases on social media. We, we are addicted to telling people what we're doing and we're doing nothing. We just want to inform people. That's what social media has done. Let me just tell you what I'm doing. And six months later, it's doing nothing. Why? Because we're addicted to telling folks what we're doing versus allowing people to see the good work and the great work of God working in us. And they will testify, God is with that woman. God is with that man. Why do you say that? Do you see how they parent their kids? Do you, do you see how he treats his wife? Do you see how she handles stress? Do you see how he handles stress? Do you see that? Do you see how he handled that tragedy right there? Do you see how he handled that loved one going home? Do you see how he handled, do you see how he handled being done wrong? How she handled being done wrong? That's the great, that's the good work of God in people. And that is what they should be marveling at, not how many followers you have. Let me get this ready for me in the translations uh, <laughs> that I sent to you. Uh, Philippians 1. <clears throat> Woo, somebody give me a hallelujah up in here. Now, Paul, Paul is going to let us in on some stuff. Paul and Timothy, uh, the servants of Jesus Christ, verse 1, to all the saints in Christ, Jesus, which are at Philippi, with bishops and deacons, verse 2, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. Paul is talking to the church uh, uh, of the Philippians. Grace be unto you and God our Father from the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, what Paul is doing is, 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 is looking at a, a group of people, and he's looking at them, and what's happening is he is, the manifestation of the work of God in these people's lives is really blowing his mind. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance, remembrance of you. Verse 4, always in prayer, always in every prayer of mine, for you are all making requests, for you all making requests with joy. Watch this, verse 5. For your fellowship in the gospel, your relationship, your fellowship, your, 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 the reciprocation of you going to God, and I see God, you receiving God, your fellowship, your relationship, your connection, watch this, your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul is saying, the first day I met you, ever since the first day I've met you guys, I've seen the work of God in your life. And he's impressed by that. I've seen the work of God in your life. 
Watch this, verse 6. Watch this. D- d- here it is. Being confident, this is the most quoted, most popular scripture. We quote it all the time, but we're going to see what it means tonight. Being confident of this very thing. Being confident of this very thing. Could it be, could it be that the reason Christians are so cobwebbed all the time, up, down, in, out, anointed, not anointed, supposed to be called, not, I'm, not, not, I'm not called, I'm serving, I don't need to serve. They're just, they're, just, they're just in and out. Why? Because they're trying to drive their lives instead of, letting the, instead of letting the word of God drive them. But guess what's lacking? Confidence. See, when you lack confidence, you try everything to try to appease the lack of confidence in you. But when you have confidence, you walk in that room with your shoulders up. You don't walk in obscure and all this kind of stuff. You walk in with your shoulders up, your head held high. Why? Because you're confident in you. And Paul is saying, and Paul is witnessing these people, and he says, listen, verse 6, being confident of this very thing that which, uh, the very thing that which has begun a good work in you. Somebody said, that's me. God, <laughs> Paul is witnessing and saying to these people and repeating back to them, I can see that God has started something in you. But I see where your confidence comes from. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, let's see it in the Passion Translation. From Paul and Timothy, both of us, servants of Jesus Christ, the anointed one, to all his devoted followers in Philippi, including your pastors, and to all your servant leaders of the church. Keep going. May the blessing of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God. Somebody said it flows from me. It flows from me. It comes from God. Then it flows from me. The supernatural peace that flow, flows from God, our wonderful Father, and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon our lives. Let's keep going. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union, Paul is saying. And our enduring partnership, he's talking about how they supported him financially. and We're going there. And our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. Mm. Next verse. I pray with great faith for you. Paul is so impressed to see the work of God in these people's lives. You can just hear him. He is, he is blown away. He's telling them, I pray with great faith for you. Because I'm fully convinced he's seen the manifested goodness of God. He's seen the manifested power of God in these people. He says, because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you, think about this now, this glorious work in you will faithfully continue to process, continue the process of maturing you, write that down in your notes, the process of maturing you. So a lot of times we're looking for the will of God. We want to know where is he at? No. Are you maturing in the things of God? Are you maturing in your spiritual walk? Faithfully continue, faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches. <laughs> Somebody just rub your shoulder like that. You are all that. God is working in you. God is going to, listen, God cannot lie. God is going to finish. God started a good work in you. And God says, I'm going to finish it. And the only people who get in the way of that is us. Finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, until my son comes back, I'm going to be faithfully, intensely at work in you. I'm telling you, if we get this, no more divorces. We get this, no more depression. We get this, no more low self-esteem. We get this, no more chasing God. We get this, no more trying to buy prosperity. No more trying to look like we're prosperous. Why? So I said, hey, what's going on with you? Man, God is at a, he's, at a, he's doing a mighty work in me. God, God is doing a mighty work in me. I, I thought you were going to start that thing. Man, God is doing a good work in me. 
And God cannot lie. He is doing some powerful stuff for me, brother. I'm seeing stuff in the Word in my prayer time. I'm growing in God. I'm learning to hold my tongue. I'm maturing in the things of God. I'm becoming a better husband, better mother, better, better spouse, better parent, I'm a better businessman, a better neighbor. God is doing a mighty thing in my life. And when, you fall, when you're full of that concept, you don't chase the next invention. God will just give it to you. You don't chase the next business concept. God will just give it to you. You don't work to expand things. You just be faithful over it, and God will just expand it. And people will see the work of God in your life and marvel over the work of God in your life more so than they marvel over your hot dogs that you sell. Woo, these hot dogs are good, but that brother that sell those hot dogs, boy, do you see the work of God in his life? Do you see how his kids approach him? Do you see how his wife, do you see how nice he is? Do you see how, how grateful he is? Do, do you see how he runs, runs that business? Do you see how the, the lady was short on money and he told her, just go ahead and take it? Do you see how once a month he, he, he goes down there with his business and he, and he feeds the homeless? Once a month he goes over to a school and he does this and does. Do you see how that guy's giving back to the community? Do you see people are seeing the good work of God in your life? And Paul is blown away by this. Let's read the Amplified. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ, <clears throat> of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, to all the saints, God's people in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, at Philippi, including the overseers and the deacons. Grace to you and peace, inter peace intercom, and spiritual well-being from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. I thank my God in every remembrance of you. God have mercy. Always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with specific requests. For all of you here in Philippi, thanking God for your participation and partnership, both your comforting fellowship and gracious contributions in advancing the good news regarding salvation from the first day you heard it until now. I'm convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. We've got to stop chasing life. We've got to stop chasing the rabbit. We've got to stop chasing the gossip, chasing those who, who have nothing to do with God. We, if we do chase them, we want to introduce God to them. Listen, never chase a rattlesnake down the path who bit you in the arm, on the arm. Why? The poison is going to rush through your body more quicker. We got to stop wasting our time chasing other things outside of us acknowledging the good and great work that God is doing in us. And boy, I see it. We spoke to a young lady last night <clears throat> over the phone, went through some horrible stuff, going through some tough times, so on and so forth. Well, well, well tough times, I, you know, she didn't, no indication that she was going through tough times. And, and me and my wife was talking to her, this, that, and the other on the phone. And, 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 and we got off the phone, and, and, and I said, my gosh, I, I was just so blessed by that phone call. I said, because she should be falling out all over the place. She should be giving up on God right now. She should be abandoning the things of God based on what's going on in her life. But I tell you what, here's what I told her. I said, the anchor holds. I said, I see the work of God in you. She said, yeah, you know, you know, advice here and advice there. You know, this one says do this. This one says do that. And this time, I said, ah, none of that. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just plugged into God. I, 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 I'm just flowing with God. I'm, I'm, I'm standing in his presence. I'm standing in his face. What, what was she saying? This good work, this great work that God is doing in me is sustaining me during the worst time of my life. The good work of God. Nothing out here. What's going on in here? And some people you can talk to when they're going through stuff, they want to give up on God. They want to leave the church. They're mad at everybody. Why? Because they fail to nurture and steward the good work that Paul is talking about, the great work of God that's going on on the inside of them. Now, why was Paul so blown away? Why was Paul, you, you know, just, just kind of thrown back by these people's commitment to God? You know why? Because they were releasing their money towards him. <laughs> They were supporting him financially. And he looked and he said, huh, your generosity is a great indication that God is doing a good work in you. He was blown away. 
He said, I'm extremely confident that he's going to perfect everything that concerns you until Jesus comes back. Why? Because I see there's evidence. Your spiritual reflection is showing me that God is doing a great work in you. And I'll be honest with you. You got to look at your money. You got to look at your finances. Why? Because it was Jesus who set that master right beside him. (laughs) And he says, you got to choose now, which means it's powerful. It's persuasive. It talks. It's got a voice. It's called mammon. He says, listen, you got to choose between us. There's only one. You got to choose. It's just that powerful. And Paul was witnessing these people release financial assistance towards him. And he deemed that as God is really at work in you. I don't believe that. Well, read the scripture for yourself. You just read it. He was blown away by it. This is not a financial message, but it was just, this is a small KPI, a key performance indicator, a, 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 an indication, an indicator to Paul that God is at work in you. Psalms 138. Psalms 138. Hallelujah. Woo! My, 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 my. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Psalms 138. No more loader bar living. No more childhood dominating your life. No more external. Listen, God created you in his image. And it's us who demote us based on what the world says. God doesn't demote us. He fearfully and wonderfully made us. We're created in his image and the work that he's doing in us It's a powerful thing. And the day we get a revelation of that, which I feel like it's going to be tonight, the day we get a revelation of that, everything else takes a back seat. How you doing, brother? Man, God is doing some powerful stuff in me. How you doing, sister? God is doing some powerful stuff in me. You you, you ready to preach? No, 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 no. I'm not ready to preach. I'm just, I'm a walking billboard of the powerful work that God can do in a believer's life. I'm a walking billboard of the powerful work that God can do in a believer's life. Listen, God committed to it. God committed to doing this work in us. Psalms 138. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Man alive. (laughs) Somebody say, you trying to tell me that I shouldn't worry about tomorrow, worry about my job, worry about my kids. No, you should never worry about your job and worry about your kids. Give no thought to that. You pray over your job. You pray over your kids. God is taking care of everything concerning your life behind the scenes. But we busy ourselves so much trying to do God's job, and when you do that, you get completely confused. You're actually, Because why? You're not omnipotent. You're not all-knowing. It's not even your job. God, God, saying, God is saying, that is not your job description. The only job description you have is believe. Mm. Glory to God. Psalms 138. Uh, Oh, man. Verse 1. David says, I will praise thee with my whole heart, my whole heart before the God's will. I sing upon thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name. For thy loving kindness is for thy truth. For you have magnified thy word above thy name. Hallelujah. In the day when I cried, you answered me. In the day when I cried, you answered me, and David is rejoicing. David is excited to know, God, you are real. You are there. You are at work in me. The great work, the good work that God is doing. He's excited about that. He says, man, you answered me, and you gave me strength, and you gave me strength, not outside here, in my soul. Somebody say, in my soul. This is the good work. This is the great work. We got to start embracing soul richness, soul wealth. God is so big in you. God wants to be so big in you. He wants to do so many things through you. But guess what? When you put his work at naught in your life and try to hop outside of that and start something, it goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. Why? Because you've thwarted the power, the real power. And the real power is the great work that he committed to do in you. He said, you answered me. You gave me strength. You gave me strength in my soul. Let's keep going. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. 
Lord have mercy. Yeah, they sing the, they, they sing in the, in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Look at the value he's putting on God. Look at the value he's, look at the appraisal that he's doing. David is so excited to know about the work that God is doing in him. Though the Lord be high, yes, has he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth far off. We all we know about that. You can't walk around in pride. The lower you go, the higher God takes you. The lower we lower ourselves, the, the, the more God wants to promote us. That's the good work. That's the great work. What is that? Walking in humility. Don't try to force your way. Make your way. Swindle here. Swindle there. Brown nose here. Drop a word for me. You ain't got to drop no word for me. You ain't got to drop no word for you. Why? You are anointed to advance. Why? Because God's good work and great work is on the inside of you. And if we just pause right there and nurture that and let that thing mature, instead of having 10 vans, you'll have 25. They go, how in the world are you even doing that? Oh, man, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I know how you're doing it. God is perfecting everything that concerns you. He's doing a good work, this great work that he's doing. You're so big on the inside. People look at you and go, how are you doing that? The bigness on the inside determines the bigness on the outside. Next verse. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. God told me I'd be more careful. Stop fretting. Stop worrying. Stop wondering if you're going to have a job. Stop wondering what your kids are going to be like five years from now. Stop wondering if, you, if, if, if your business is going to do this, if it's going to do that. Stop wondering what's going to happen with the economy. Stop wondering what's going to happen with the government. You see, David said, look, I know you're with me. I know this great work you committed to. You are with me. He says, you will revive me. You will, you, you will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies. This good work, this great work is happening to you. You don't have to fight. Vengeance is God's. Stop wasting so much time driving your Rolls Royce, swatting at gnats. People will talk. People will gossip. People will try to tell you that you're all that. Listen, sometimes you got to be able to tell yourself. When people say you're all that, you got to say, I'm not. I'm not going to buy into that. I ain't got a liquor dog going fruit. Woo, boy, that business is taking off. Ah, it ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. I got to go back and talk to God. It ain't done a dog going thing. I'm telling you it's doing something. I'm acting like it's doing something. It ain't doing nothing. Why? Because we become addicted to press releases to try to show people what God is doing in our lives instead of saying, no, 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 I got to know for myself that this work, I got to be confident that this good work, this great work that God committed to is happening on the inside of me. He says, against the wrath of my enemies and thy right hand shall save me. Here we go. The Lord, (laughs) the Lord of lords, And the kings of kings says, you know what? Why are you worried about external things? He says, look, the Lord will perfect everything that concerns you. Your energy needs to be redirected from the outside to the inside. Why is that? Because God got all of that. God has gone ahead of you in your life. God is going ahead of you in your business. God is going ahead of you in your singlehood. God is going ahead of you in, in, in your teenage years. God is ahead of you. And get, well, what is he doing? He's doing the great and mighty work that he committed to in Philippians 1. What is he doing? He's perfecting everything that concerns you. The good work. The great work. What's going to happen now? Redirect your energy. Stop wasting so much time on external things. God's got that. He said, look, I started a work in you. I'm committed to it. I cannot lie. I cannot. So I'm doing that. Until Jesus comes back, I'm doing that. Also, I perfect everything outside of you that concerns you. So why are you, why are you, why are you, why, why are you in my business, God says? All you got to do is believe me. Spend time with me. Get to know me. Share, share me with everybody you come across that needs a Savior. That's all you got to do. But you're trying to be somebody instead of realizing you've already met somebody. And that somebody is Jesus. And that's enough. Why? Because that great work, that good work that God is doing in you, I'm here to tell you, if you slow down, I promise you, your life will speed up. If you slow down, I promise you, your business will speed up. Slow down and do what? Give God thanks. Give God praise. Give God some time. Don't press release God and don't spend no time with him. Yeah, God, God really blessed me. No, you just had good credit and you bought a house. That's it. Because I know some people, <laughs> I know some people who, 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 
somebody bought the house for him. I know some people who, who, who somebody put all the money down for him. I know some people who, who, who bought a house and somebody say, hey, before you get in it, figure out what needs to be done, we're going to pay for it. I know some people like that. What is that? That's the great work. That's the good work. That's not to put the people down who are buying houses with good credit. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying when you know, when you know that you know that you know that you know, that Philippians 1 verse 6, and you have confidence of the great work that God committed to do in you until Jesus comes back, when you, know, when you know that you know that you know that, guess what? You can't be talked in the shortcuts. You will say, this ain't God, before you say, this is God, and fake it. This ain't God. Why ain't the, this ain't God? Ah, this is too hard. <laughs> he said he perfects things that concerns me. He goes ahead of me. He prepares my way. This is all me. This is all strength of my arm. This is all me doing this, and this ain't God. Matter of fact, let's pause the brakes right here. Why? I have great confidence in the great work and the good work that God is doing in me. He says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. I want you to work knowing God is prospering you. I want you to work knowing your promotion is coming. I want you to live single knowing your husband is coming. I want you to live single knowing your wife is coming. I want you to live married knowing that you're going to be together until the Lord's come back forever and ever and ever. I want you to be married knowing there's a foundation of foreverness in this union. Do you hear what I'm saying? And leave everything else up to God. You start believing right, everything lines up. You start walking out that Philippians 1, 1, 6 and be confident in that very thing like Paul was when he looked at those people. People have got to look at us the same way and say this right here. I'm very confident that God is doing something powerful in you and he's going to perfect it and he's going to finish it and he's committed to that. And it's, 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 it's just, it's not if, it's when. It's when. Hallelujah. Now, let me, let me give you this. When Paul says, for living one, when Paul says, for I am confident, <clears throat> the Greek word, patho, P-E-I-T-H-O, means to have, to have come to a settled persuasion concerning some truth or fact, and so to be persuaded or convinced. Come to a settled persuasion that God is for you all the way for you. God is not against you. God don't put sickness on you. God don't take loved ones from you. You got to come to a set of persuasion that God is good and the great work is happening in you. And you don't have to show nobody nothing. I double dog dare you to have a spirit of quietness on you as God is blessing you. Oh, sister, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, 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 I just, I'm really not focused on telling everybody everything that God is doing. <laughs> I'm really, I just want people to see God in me. Oh, wow, that's, that's pretty doggone amazing. You know, man, I didn't know that you, yeah, man, I you know God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I got the contract. I honor him. Matter of fact, I got the contract, and God laid it on my heart to put some money down on single, that single mom's uh, uh, condo there, and, and, and I did it, and I told her, look, this is, this is God's doing. It's marvelous in my eyes. If, if anything, give him the praise, and I'll see you Sunday in church. God loves you that much. And boy, you start living your life like that, you are showing absolute confidence of the great work and the good work that God has done and is doing in you. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen. <clears throat> that word pathos suggests that a conclusion has been reached. Watch this. On reasonable ground. <laughs> A, conclu a conclusion, God had reached a conclusion. Paul had reached a conclusion that, you know what? God is going to finish the good work he started in you. God is going to finish the good work he started in you. It's not enough to just exist as a believer. It's, that's not enough. It's not enough to act like we're growing as believers. That's not enough. That's not enough. You know, the Bible, do you know the Bible Never, never is a strong word, but the Bible uh, doesn't champion you making things happen. <laughs> it says goodness and mercy follows you, follows you. 
all the day of your life. You know what the Bible does, champion? It's now, now examine yourself now. Pay attention to yourself now. But there's no such thing as make it happen, Christians. Drop that term. Although I am Mr. Make It Happen, you know, for my wife. Uh, <laughs> but from a word perspective, there's no such thing as, you know, make it happen. Believe harder. Pray hard and God moves. Pray and drag your words and your prayers are going to be more powerful. You know, drag your words and put a little on the end of it and that means you're, you're, you're saying something powerful. No such thing. It's almost like, you know, you see these ladies, uh, on, I, m m my uh, wife and my daughter watch a lot of YouTube, this, YouTube, that, and people with the makeup, the eyebrows, and the, and the, and the sewing the eyebrows, and the tattoo, and, the, and all this stuff, and how to apply this makeup, and how to, how to do this. And I always notice that all of these ladies on these videos, they don't say and, they say and. <laughs> You're going to take this color right here, and. You're going to do this, and. And I notice, I notice all people, all ladies are showing something, talking something, and, and. I'm like, what is the and? What is that? And, 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 and it's, 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 they've convinced themselves that it's, 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 it's just more intelligent that way. It sounds more, and. Well, let me tell you about your and. I'm trying to tell you, you ain't got to talk no certain way, be respectful, have good dialect, but, but you, 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 you just got to have confidence that God is and God is working in you. I'm kind of afraid to open my mouth because I can't, I don't sound quite as intelligent as this person. I can't break it down like this person. That's okay. You can believe. Breaking it down is not the champion thing. Breaking it down clearly is not the champion thing. Believing is the champion thing for a believer. Believing right. Believing the finished works of Christ. Do you believe right? Yeah, I believe right. So, so what? You can't stand up and preach. So what? You can't break the word down. So what? You can't do that. Do you believe right? Yeah, I believe right. I believe in the good work that's going on in me. I believe that God's going to finish what he started in me, and I'm believing right. Okay, well, brother, you are well on your way. You are maturing spiritually, and that is, that is, that, that, that is the pinnacle. Mature in the thing that God started in you. Woo! The Apostle Paul's observation of what God had done among the Philippians in particular, and his reflections on the ways of, of God in general, led him to form that judgment in Philippians 1.6. His observation led him to form that judgment. What judgment? That, man, I I'm confident that God is at work in your life. I I'm absolutely confident that God is going to finish what he started in you guys. Mm. Paul was entirely convinced of the truth of what he said, and he thus uses the language of a man, watch this, who had no doubt on the subject. Whew. People need to look at you and have no doubt that God is at work in you. No doubt. When people say, hey, you got to meet this lady, you got to meet this man, when you show up, they need to be saying, there's no doubt that God is working in that man right there. There's no doubt that God is working in that woman right there. There's no doubt that God is working in that child right there. By the Spirit of God, take pressure off of your children to perform. Take pressure off of them. And start making sure that they understand the good work that God is doing in them. And if they get a revelation of that, everything outside of them, they're going to do exploits. Because like, here's one thing I know, the world will fail you. Man, mom and them said, do it like this, do it like that. Mom and them said I was great. Yeah, every child is great in those four walls. When you step outside of those four walls, everybody don't think that. But I tell you what, step outside of those four walls knowing that God started to work in you at 18 or at 12, whenever you got born again, and guess what's going to happen? He's going to finish that work in you. That is your confidence. That is your bonus that you walk in. That is your, 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 your shoulder square. That is what you walk in. I text a young man, had a rough, rough weekend. I text him, da, 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 da. I said, look, I have no doubt <laughs> that God is at work on your life. God is bigger in your life than that thing that just happened. God will always be bigger in your life than that thing that just happened. And I told him, I am more impressed with the work of God in your life that you display than this, 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 this activity that you do. I'm more impressed with the work of God in your life. And if I'm the only voice who ever tells you that, guess what? That's going to be the voice that's going to make you great. 
that's going to be the foundation that's going to make you great. And I'm here to tell you that work of God in your life is greater than the thing you just did for the last two hours. That's just a supplement. Matter of fact, if you put that before the work of God in your life, that's a demotion to you. <laughs> Don't you get stressed out. Don't you go crazy. Don't you let the world and people pressure you into putting that thing before the good work, the great work of God that's happening in your life. Place tremendous value on that. Why? That's a rare thing in believers. And you have it. Amen. Amen. Woo! Let's keep going here. Hallelujah. Somebody give me a hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! God will perfect everything that concerns you. Listen, when he says we'll perfect, what is that? He, he says, I will, I will intensi- intensify my hand in your life. I will intensify my drive in your life. I will intensify my leading, my covering, and my guidance in your life. I'm going to perfect. Think about that. Everything that concerns you. That's why God should always be the great default when you're confused, when you're stuck on stuck. You got to get back to the great work. You say, God, you say you, can, you, you perfect everything that concerns me? This concerns me right now. Yes, we are. I'm going to tell you why it concerns you. But why does it concern me? Well, you, you're a people pleaser. Oh, oh, wow. Yep, you, you got to stop doing that. I'm doing a mighty work in you, and uh, I'm in there, and I see all the gold in you, and we're going to mine it out of you, but you got to you, 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 you're in bondage to people. You're in bondage to what people think about you. And it drives your life. It controls your life. Oh, you, you didn't know that? Yeah, it absolutely controls your life. Listen, the day a thing begins to alter your lifestyle, it's got too much control of your life. Today, the day weight makes you uncomfortable. And it starts to alter your life and and, and if you go here, if you go there, if you, if you do this, if you do that, if you, if you wear this, if you wear that, it, th- th- that, that thing, it's got too much control in your life. You, you've altered your entire lifestyle around it. You've, you've altered everything. Around. And listen, the day that starts to happen, you better get back to the Philippians 1.6 and realize, look, oh, the great work that God is doing in me. I'm, I'm, I, I got to get back to that. I got to get back to that. You can't allow that thing to control your life and alter your life. you got to know that the great work and the good work that God is doing to you is the greatest thing that could ever, ever happen to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, man, let me get back to my notes. God, have mercy. God has intensified his hand in our lives. God wants to intensify his hand in your life. He's perfecting everything that concerns you. And I'm going to tell you, if we buy into this perfection that God is doing behind the scenes, our relationship with our kids will lose all tension. Because to be honest, when you think <laughs> that they're going left or right, sometimes you can just open your mouth and aggravate the doggone fire out of them. It's like the last thing I needed was you saying that. The last thing I needed to do was feel like I'm still five years old. Well, it's because I love you. Well, because you love me, don't, don't, don't have a loose lip in this situation. Your safest bet when your child is going through some stuff, a rough time, rough day, speak the word to him. <laughs> speak the word to him. Well, I'm going to say this because I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to say this because I love you. This, that, and the other. May not be the right time to say that. Maybe time to say, hey, man, God is going to perfect everything that concerns you. I know you're going through. We ain't got to talk about it right now, but I do know that the God of comfort has got his hands all around you, man. He's going ahead to you. He's going to perfect everything that concerns you. And, 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 and I'm here to tell you, uh, when you're ready to talk about it, we can talk about it. But right now, let's go ahead and eat this barbecue sandwich. Let's, let, let, let's go ahead and do it. Wow, what, what in the world? Look, your confidence is in the great work and the good work that God is doing in your son, that God is doing in your daughter, that God is doing in your spouse, that God is doing in your subordinate, that God is doing in your boss. That's where your confidence is. But when you start trying to change them and override God's great work in them, you're going to get ahead of yourself. And when we get ahead of ourselves with people's lives, guess what? It doesn't turn out too well. Mm. He wants to intensify his hand. Perfecting the things that concern us conveys the sense that God would carry out the work, watch this, to full finishing. I got it in my notes. The idea that God's going to perfect everything that concerns us or, or uh, finish the good work that he started in us, watch this, it's, 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 it's got mighty. It conveys the sense that God would carry out the work to a full finish. 
God will not commence or begin his work in us and abandon us. That's not God. God is always there, 24-7, just like radio waves. God is always there, just like the concave waves, the concurrent waves. God is always there. There's no such thing as, God, you started, but man, you might have left me right here. I feel like you left me, God. I feel, I, I, right now, I, I can't feel you, God. And it's like, you can't feel me. You hadn't felt me in six months in prayer. You ain't felt me in six months in no, 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 no fellowship. You ain't felt me in six months. And now something happens in your life, and you want to say, God, where you at? I can't feel you. No, you got to feel God every day. You got to nurture that good work. God, I know you're doing something good in me and great in me. Good in me. Fix your coffee for the morning. Great in me. Good. Come here, baby. Let me kiss you before you go to school. God is doing something good in you and great in her. God is doing something good in this family and in our lives. Let's go ahead and pray and huddle up. Woo! Glory to God. You got a test today? You got a test today? Hallelujah. Sweetheart, you, you, you got an interview? Okay, good, 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 good. God is doing something good in this family. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we have extreme confidence that the work, the good work, the great work that you started in me, Billy, Sally, Sandy, my wife, that you started, you're going to do it today. No matter what it looks like in the meeting, I know that you're still doing the good work in me. So when they pass you by, you say, good work. That's a good work. Man, I didn't get a promotion. Oh, it's good work. God's doing good work. What do you mean? God says, man, I ain't standing in line for 95000 I got a job coming up that they don't even know about. Only you can do it, and you got all the credentials for it. I got one coming up, and, and I already got it lined up. It's going to start out at 123, and it's going to be you. Just chill out. Stop. Don't try to force your way. Don't BCC nobody. Don't CC nobody. None of that kind of stuff. Just show up singing. God is doing a good work in me, and he's going to finish what he started. Hey, sister, I got a friend you may want to meet. Uh, not right now. God ain't told me nothing about no friend. He ain't told me nothing. I'm good to go. I'm full of confidence. I'm full of uh, high step esteem. I'm full of God doing great things for me. I'm totally content in the things of God. I'm exercising myself unto godliness. I got, I got, I, you know, I, I got friends. I got ladies I hang out with. I got buddies I hang out with. We're, we're good to go. We are so focused on the good work that God is doing in us, we're going to run into somebody that the good work is God is doing in them, and they're going to say, hey, I didn't know you was coming on this path. I didn't know you was coming on this path. God's doing the good work in both of us, and bam, there you go. You don't have a ministry project. Now, I got to make you pray. I got to make you a man of God. I got to make you come to church. I got to act like you're a man of God. I got to act like you're a praying man of God. No, 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 no. That's a ministry project. And I'm not saying that God can't do a powerful thing in his life. But the bottom line is, you got to expect the best. Nice man, good man, but I, I, I don't, I, no. No, I don't know where you're at, what you're doing, or how you're doing it, I don't know. And I ain't going to tell myself that I got me a faithful buck in the Lord because in actuality, I don't know what you're doing or what you was doing. And the bottom line is, I don't have time for that. This is not the good work that God promised me. I don't have time for that. Matter of fact, I want to make sure you know God, love God. You got the Holy Ghost. I can make sure you got that. But let's just pause this thing right now. Let's just be friends. But why? Because this is not a reflection of the good work. And I'm not high and mighty. It's just I, I, it, you come to, a, you come to a, a time in your life where you don't want projects. You want somebody to remove birds and destroy yokes? You want somebody to lead you? Listen, the woman can't follow a parked car. And as a strong woman, don't be addicted to getting a weak man that you can't control. Because that, that, that man has got problems for a reason that you're ignoring. They're not red roses, they're red flags <laughs> that he's giving you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Know the good work that God is doing in you and know how to recognize it right off. This is not judgmental. It's just Paul recognized right off with the Philippians. God is doing a mighty work in you. You got to recognize it right off. Right off with your future spouse. Right off with your future wife or husband. You got to recognize right off. Not being judgmental. Where's the work of God in your life? Because I know he's doing something. Either you are shunning it away. You just ain't walking in it or something. But where's that at? Because I want to be impressed by that. Listen, nothing in this life will prevent the successful accomplishment of God's good work in every Christian. Let me say that again. Nothing in this life will prevent the successful accomplishment of God's work in every Christian. Nothing. 
God is at work in you. God made that promise. God is the Alpha and the Omega in our lives. Moses said, well, what should I tell them? Who should I tell them that you are? Tell them I am that I am, whatever they need me to be. I'm at work in their life. Whatever they need me to be, that's who I am. Yeah, but she's single. Well, I just play, play the role of a husband. I just, I, I just, I will be intimate in prayer. We'll, 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 we'll talk to one another. We'll have conversation. We'll, we'll blow one another's mind. She's blowing my mind with how much she's growing in God. I'm blowing her mind, how much I'm downloading to her to recognize good works in her future husband and to recognize this ain't the one, sweetheart. Got people around you matchmaking and bringing. Why, why would you think I want that? Am I walking around that pitiful? Am I that desperate? Yeah, I'm just saying he's got a lot going on, but I'm telling you. He, no, no. No, no. I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being prideful, but I'm just looking for good work. Evidence. Now, when you see the evidence, you can work with that. Amen? Because you got some stuff going on with you, too. But he sees the evidence of the good work of God in your life. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Philippians 2, real quick. Philippians 2. Glory to God. Philippians 2, 13. Mm. Woo! Ah! For it is God! For it is God! No, I thought it was my husband. I thought it was my wife. No. It is God that works in you. I get my drive. I'm self-driven. It is God that works in you. Two things. Both to will and to do. Watch this now. Here it is again. Of his good pleasure. God says, this good work I started in you. Listen, let's keep the subject the same. I don't need you to be a powerful speaker. I don't need you to be a powerful evangelist. I don't need you to be this powerful man of God, powerful woman of God. I need you to walk out this good work that I'm doing in you and this good pleasure I'm doing in your life. God says, I provoke you to climb. I provoke you to overcome. Me working in you can take you from sadness to joy. Me working in you can take you from depression to joy. Me, my good, my good works in you can take you from low to high. My works in you can take you from fearful to brave. That's my work in you. Well, I read five books. Well, well, the books are always supplement. It's not the foundation. It's my good work that I, God, the Alpha and the Omega, El Elyon, the most high, most high God, I committed to finish what I started in you. Do you actually think you're going to fail? The only way you're going to fail is you debunk the good works that I'm doing in you and deem something else higher than that. And when you do that, you feel like you're lost. But when you receive the good works that I'm doing in you, guess, guess how you feel? You feel empowered, like you can run through a brick wall. And I tell you what, that's a good feeling. Write this down in your notes. I need to slow down so I can speed up. Now you chew on that. Slow down so you can speed up. Speed up how? Slow down reaching for stuff. Your arms are too short. Slow down reaching for success and start slowing, slow down reaching for success and start reaching for belief in the good work that God's doing in you. Convince yourself of that. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, it's real quick. It is true, it is true that God brings his work to completion. It is equally true that when God has once begun his work in men, the latter by no means remain merely passive instruments. In other words, when we're talking about passive, passive instruments, in other words, there is no such thing as what happens, happens when God is working through us and in us. <laughs> oh, what happens, happens. Are you going to demote the work of God like that? You're going to let somebody, you're going to let pressure cause you to let relief that out of your mind? Oh, what happens, happens. What do you mean what happens, happens? God is doing the work in you. He committed to it. Stop saying what happens, happens, and say, God, I'm, 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 I'm recalibrating on the work you're doing in me. This door closed. Guess what? Closed doors are of you. I'm recalibrating my belief uh, uh, on the work you're doing in me. Not what happens, happens. That's a cop-out. 
And you know what that further leads to? Lower self-esteem. It's a cop-out. You keep your shoulders high. You keep your shoulders squared. You get on the tip of your toes. Come off of your heels and walk in the good work that God is doing in you. I don't like the color of my skin. I don't like the size. I don't like the way my eyes look. I don't like the way my cheeks look. When I smile, my nose do this. And all this kind of stuff. It's like God is like, what in the world? Why do you major on demoting your own self? You're fearfully and wonderfully made, God says. I'm doing a powerful work in you, God says. Don't demote me down with your own demotion of yourself. Get a revelation of who you are in me, not in you. <clears throat> oh, man. Got to mind and be more careful. Holy smokes. <sighs> mm. And you know, according to Philippians 1, 6, God and his work in us, somebody say in us, is constantly developing spiritual maturity. And he won't stop until his son returns. Boy, that's good news right there. That is good news that God, the one who can't fail, the one who can't lie, is, is his job description is I'm at work in my children. Always. I'm at work in them when they got a job, when they don't have a job. I'm, I'm at work in them when five customers leave and, and, and ten customers come. I'm at, I'm at work with them when ten customers leave and, and five customers come. I, I'm at work in them. That, that's my job description. I'm at work in them. And the more, more my kids to get a revelation of that, guess what? We got a good relationship going on. God will always love us. He will never leave us or forsake us. But here's the bottom line. We forsake him with unbelief. Unbelief of what? That he's not working in you. And I came here to tell you, I don't care what your education level is. I don't care the color of your skin, how old you are, 15, 85. Let me tell you something. One thing is true. God is at work in you. God is at work in you. And learn to recognize it. Learn to talk about it. Learn to acknowledge it. Learn to speak out loud and say, God, you're so good to me. Oh, I'm maturing in that situation, God. Oh, that phone call was hard, but you worked through me. Oh, I didn't want to send that text, but, but, but you worked through me. Oh, I don't want to bless that person at my job, but you did it. Oh, I was, I was a Christian who never wanted to give again, never wanted to do it. But God, you did something in my heart, and when I released it, oh, I just felt so good. What is that? That's the work of God in you. That's the work of God in you. God and his work, is, God and his work in us is, is constantly developing spiritual maturity, and he won't stop until his son returns. If God knows and says he will finish it, let's stop pausing it. If God knows the work he's doing in us and he said he's going to finish it, let's stop pausing it. Listen, just get up on that wheel and let the potter's hand get on your life. Wake up, put one foot in front of the other. Be nice, be prayerful, be meek, be kind. One foot in front of the other. Acknowledge your father. Spend time with him. Be nice and, 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 and be a giver. Be generous and, and remove burns and destroy yokes. Learn how to hush when you need to hush. Let your yeas be yeas and your noes be noes. Listen, watch this and watch this. And God is going to move through you mightily. <clears throat> if God knows and will finish it, why do we spend so much time trying to find it? If God knows the will of God for my life, and he's committed to, committed to finishing it, why do I spend so much try, time trying to find it? God, where's the will of, where, where is it at? You know, by, by December, I thought I, I would be hearing from, be hearing from what? Why, is you, why are you so distracted off the good works of God in your life? Trying to find something. Trying to find it. God is like, I am it. I'm working in you, man. I'm working in you, sweetheart. Oh, gosh. Mm, mm, mm. If God knows and will finish it, why do we spend so much time trying to find it? Instead, we should be monitoring our spiritual maturity as God is moving through us, speaking through us, as we're praying and spending time with him. We should be monitoring our growth in that. Hallelujah. Our desire to grow in the things of God that he's doing inside of us must trump the things that we're trying to do outside of us. Desire to walk in his good work. Desire to recognize it when God is doing it. Desire to see it when God is doing it. And the value of the good work, the great work that God is doing in you, it's going to go high. And you know, it's real quick. Don't forfeit what God is committed to do in you for what you're trying to do outside of you. Mm. 
Don't forfeit what God is committed to do. In you, what is he committed to do? The good work. For what you're trying to do outside of you. Or what people are pressuring you to be. It's called the great work that he's doing. People will pressure you right out of the good work that God is doing in your life. And people that's close to you will start deeming something higher than the work that God is doing in you, and you begin to get confused. Hey, what? Man, I, I, thought, I thought this was the thing. No, this is the thing. No, this is the thing. But why do you leave with this all the time? Because this is the thing. Listen, don't let people pressure you into abandoning the good work that God is doing inside of you. You know what they'll say? Girl, you ought to start this. Man, you should start this. Boy, you'll be good at this. Thank God for people looking out for you. But you got to say, wait a minute, what does that got to do with the good works that God is doing in me? <laughs> Desire to be nothing greater than a vessel that God is working in and through. <laughs> God, <too mighty. sighs> Desire to be nothing greater than a vessel that God is working in and through. Desire to do that. God, I desire to be a vessel that you're working in, that you'll work through. That's my greatest desire. All the stuff on the outside, when it comes, it comes. But my desire is to be a vessel that you're working in and through. <clears throat> I, want you to live, I want you to live being fully persuaded. I want you to live being firmly persuaded concerning what God started in you, that his conclusion is 100% successful. The conclusion of what God started in you is going to be 100% successful. Live like that. God will let you live all the way to 45, all the way to 50, all the way to 55, and blow your mind with your spouse. Say, my God, boy, why was I rushing? Boy, why was I trying to make that happen? God, what you done dropped off at the doorstep? This, not this, this is your great work. Man, honey, put them 34 Levi's on again and been over it. Matter of fact, let me throw this tissue down. I want, you to, I want you to pick it up for me. You go, boy, God, what a great work you did. I'm so glad I employed patience. I waited on the Lord and I waited on this block because you are really blowing my mind right now. What is that? You embrace the good work. Stop trying to be. Because a lot of times what you're trying to be, you may not have it in you. Books told you that. Books told you how to be an awesome leader. But until you get around a, a, a group of folks that, that don't think like you, you can really see what you got in you. And God is saying the reason you struggle so much is you have an overestimation of who you think you are. You're shy. You're timid. You don't like to be wrong. You will lie when pressure comes. You don't walk in confidence. But the books told you, Step five, step, step one, two, three, four, five, you're an awesome leader. No, examine yourself and let the good works lead your life. My gosh, I can hear my wife right now. Okay, all right, I'm, 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 okay. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Lord, have mercy. Okay, how do, I, how do I live in this good works? Number one, spend time with God. Spend time with God. Spend time with God. <laughs> God told me, he said, man, I work 95 pages a day. I said, how, how much time you spend with God today? Uh, not that much, but I'm going to get this thing in the earth. I'm going to get it out there. I said, brother, you got things backwards. You want this book to represent you. You want this book to make up for the hole that's in you. And if you're just doing it to share it on Facebook and sell 25 copies, uh, go for it. But if you're doing it to bless the world, slow down and let God lead you and get big in him and focus on the good work that he's doing in you. <clears throat> so spend time with God. Number two, have evidence that God is working in you. You got to have evidence. And one of the evidence that, God, that Paul saw in the, uh, uh, the Philippians was, they were generous. They supported him. 
They supported the gospel. He was amazed at that. He said, I know that God is at work in you. You got to have evidence. You have to have it. So you can say, man, I'm powerful, I'm powerful, I'm powerful. God is good, God is good, God is good. You can tell your audience that, but here's the bottom line. Do you think that? Are you living in that? <sighs> Number three, and this is the last one. <laughs> this is a big one. Recommit to the finished works of Christ in your life. Recommit to that. And when you recommit to the finished works of Christ, you realize God has done everything he's going to do. As far as getting his son into the world, as far as getting his gospel, he's done everything he's going to do. But now, his great work, his good work, is focused on his children. He wants to live in his children. He wants to be in them and do exploits. He's going to finish what he started in them. He's going to take her from timid to powerful. He's going to take her from powerful to, 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 to pull back a little bit. He's doing a great work in you, but you gotta, you got to renew your thinking, rededicate your mind to the finished works of Christ. And guess what? Man, if the book gets going, it gets going. If the podcast gets going, it gets going. But you're focused on the good work and the great work that God has committed to start and finish in you. Were you blessed by the word? Amen. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Let's just praise his name, magnify his name. Hallelujah. I may do a part two next week, and we may cancel small groups. I may do it, so just stay tuned. I just may do it. I may call it audible because I know what God is saying. I know what God is saying to us in these last three months. I know what God wants to do through us. I know that we need to recalibrate back to the good work that God is doing. I know we are distracted with external things trying to define us. They've replaced God. And we, I, I, I just know this. And I know, I know, I know what God is saying in this time. He's saying in this time, get back to the good works I'm doing in you. Have confidence in what I'm doing in you. And the stress absolutely leaves your life. You got to call your mama, call your daddy, call your family and say, look, all that, all that dragging, all that dragging, all that noise, all that bitterness, all that unforgiveness that y'all going through. You say you're a believer? Look, God is at work in you. That is not God. That is not God. Recalibrate your thinking and get back to the love of God and so we can get this family back on track. That is not God. Why? Because God, great work that he commits to is glorious. Everything that God does in your life is inherently good. Everything. And he wants to do more. Amen? Listen, if you want to be born again, come on down. Click on the tab. If you want to rededicate your life, come on down or click on the tab right there on the website. If you want to receive the